Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is the Wix Online Meeting 217. It's August of 2021. Very exciting. We're doing this again. It's the same thing we did the last two weeks. So that'll be like tons and tons and tons of fun. All right. Uh, as always, these meetings are recorded for those of you that aren't with us right here, right now. Uh, Ron and Jacob have already said hi. If you're here, say hi too. We'd love to see you. What are we doing? Doing what we always do. We're doing triage of new issues. Then we'll do catch up on our design discussions. And then we will triage our old issues. And then we will do anything else, talk about whatever things people might have out there. So... I think that just means let's go get to it. Bob, you ready? Triage web. Triage mm. web, yes. Let's GitHub. Do it. Sorry, I meant to say new, but then I read web and then it just crossed. So here we are. Um, burn does not repair an MSI when slipstream. That sounds familiar. I think we're still skipping that. I heard it. Um, how to install Node and Python in Windows machine as well as start a bat script, which has to start the ReactJS or NPM start. I I don't, oh, this was a discussion, and then I guess not the triage issues. Like, Yeah, so I think we can, this is closed. All right, let's make this go away, because there's actually discussions. Like, I feel like I just saw this go by. It's very confused. Yep, yep. Um, I forgot to remove the label. Oh, wait, look at this. Sean opened all these issues. That means that we should go through them quickly, because they're very definitely, probably, most likely, yeah, probably issues um, that we should probably just take, usually. And bulk assigned to Sean, is that what you said? <laughs> uh, no. Uh, no. Actually, that's a good point. If we don't bulk assign to Sean, we have to figure out someone else is taking them or are we putting them into the future. Uh, Xlog doesn't get past the elevator process. So Xlog is all the debug logging yeah. stuff. I think Bob added that. And it's not getting dropped down to elevated. Um, yeah interesting yeah I, I suppose I should take this one okay in four yeah okay detect minor upgrade pack up uh, minor upgrade MSI packages independently of the base product um, is this the one that the new whip was for Sean no no this is the no. one that you guys asked me to create right based off the one we closed last time yeah Yeah, detect only if the base product is installed, not without. No, detect minor is absent if only the base product is installed. No, that without addressing. Some people see this as making things worse. All right. Um, are we taking this in four? I mean, from what we said last time, we need to fix 3421 first. Right, 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 right. I remember this now with the whole note that without addressing this, some people see it's making it worse. Right, yep, 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 yep. And I think we said we're not doing three, four, two, one, and four. I should have looked at the issue, not in three X. So, um, yeah, Sean, you have no plans to pick this up, right? Not unless someone yeah. tells me how to do it. <laughs> I think the sol best solution we have at this point is the kick off the auto repair of right. the old bundle. I think that's the best we've come up with thus far. I mean, because everything else requires perfectly aligned moons or impossible to gather knowledge. I guess well, I could do that. It's a bit of a sledgehammer because, you know, it it's is. a repair. Yeah. Um, but it's also the only way, yeah, yeah, avoiding the misaligned moons because, yeah, you might need to download. Something might be explicitly not cached yeah. and need to be re-downloaded, blah, blah, blah. There, there might the be all to... kinds of properties that have to be calculated correctly before you can reinstall a yeah. package. I mean, right. it's just, there's a, that's, it's just like, yeah, it's not a, it is what you call a hammer, a sledgehammer, the automatic repair, but the automatic repair is the best we've got. Um, it's also later in four, so I'm okay if this slips. Out of four? Out of four. I mean, the I automatic don't know repair. If we can, I don't know if we can make bundles start automatically repairing in a .x release. 
No, no, we no, have no, no. It'd be five. Yeah, I, I just there's 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 going to be repercussions of this that people have never thought of before. Why is my bundle now getting repaired? I don't do but repair or something like that, right? So that's my fear of whenever we bring this on, it's going to be a larger. It's going to have rippling effects. I expect it. It, it has to be in a dotto. Yeah. Yes, it has to be in dotto. Should it be in four dotto? I mean, if we're definitely saying auto repair is the right thing to do, then yeah, I can do that. I, I think it's the only way to. Let's put it this way. I haven't sat down for a long time trying to come up with alternatives, but every I've been able to shoot down every simple alternative I came up with very <laughs> rapidly with very straightforward scenarios in semi-complicated bundles. Not even super complicated bundles, just this, and then that scenario won't work. This, and then that scenario won't work. So it's just like not even completely out there things would break it. And I keep coming back to this is the safest thing. The problem is like, Bob said it's kind of a big hammer. Yeah, but you know, it's 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 not. We're not going from you know a framing hammer to a twenty pound sledge. It's <laughs> it's you 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 know you need properties often to install an MS uh, to reinstall a major upgrade MSI uh, or you know to reinstall the original major upgraded MSI um, and a BA does that um, or bundled authoring plus BA does that. Um, you have to find the packages. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Bundles do that. You know, it's like, it, it's, it's slightly heavier weight because you will probably end up repairing things that don't need to be repaired. But other than that, it's the only way, so, so I'm gonna, there, there is no way to do the minimal. So I'm going to need to do slightly more than that. Sorry, I'm going to bring up a, a bad word. Is this something we should have for mend? Should we have a mend? So it's not a repair? Or is repair the right thing to do? Or should we not design this right now? <laughs> there is that. Um, mend is interesting because if if we treat if and I don't know off the top of my head whether this is true. Um, actually, I don't, I don't think it matters. I'm wondering if we need an install rather than a repair, because an install is going to repair is going to reinstall stuff that's missing. Um, I don't know off the top of my head whether that's sufficient for the minor upgrade cases. So. That might not work. Otherwise, an install would install the missing stuff, which is basically what we're looking for. The MSI is interesting. If we were to, don't we, actually, don't we uninstall the minor upgrade packages? Well, I think if that's we uninstalled them, well, yeah, but if, if we uninstalled them during rollback, then an install of the old bundle would do the right thing. Well, we we don't uninstall the minor upgrade, which okay. is the feat the feature that I created. Yeah. Okay. So what do we, what do we do with it then? Do we just let it sit there on well, rollback? We, we are supposed to uninstall it during rollback. Yeah, and not just the other bug. Okay. Um, if we uninstalled it, then I think the the default behavior that you get with an install rather than a repair would be sufficient. Oh. Because really, at that point, what it, whole packages are missing. Yes, that's, that's, that's why I was thinking that needs to be fixed. Right. That's why I was thinking a repair is actually overkill. You don't have to repair it. it. Is. You just have to just install. Yeah. So, so we can what, avoid but what does a, the word bed. What does a bundle do when it says it's already installed? I mean, well, it's up to the BA. Yeah, BA could mess it up, but the default is going to be, you know, your normal plan.
Like, I'm pretty sure it's the BA that blocks the downgrade. No, I was thinking if a, if a bundle's already installed and you tell it to install again, what's the operation it chooses to do? It's like, oh, I'll do a repair? I mean, it's no. up to the BA to decide. It, the, well, the top level action is still install. Yeah. And then planning goes, oh, I need to install this missing yeah. package. I mean, again, we you know detection would we find should actually system. verify that, um, but I'm I'm pretty sure that an install is going to be all that's necessary. Now, whether we want to actually do that and instead of you know I don't know somehow tagging it as roll special back operation, repair. yeah, yeah. Right. By the way, you've been launched for this reason. Yeah. But uh, I don't think it's true. Like Jacob's pointing out, like the new bundle would still be registered if there was some rollback boundaries and yeah. stuff. Yeah, so rollback installed. boundaries do mess it up. Yes, that's true. I mean, if Jacob, if you pass like dash quiet and dash install, I mean, it depends on the BA, but that doesn't mean it'll definitely go into maintenance mode. Yeah, no, I mean, we wouldn't launch the button automatically in UI mode, of course. It would just be, oh, something went wrong. We're now repairing the old bundle. It's, 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 it's akin to upgrade. Like, we probably should add it to the related bundle relationships, honestly. Yeah. Here's your relation. The newer bundle is uninst is um, the the newer bundle has been unregistered and is now asked you to repair yourself because it broke you. It failed and broke you. <laughs> um, in the case of a rollback boundary, the new bundle is present. So in the case of a rollback boundary getting hit, yeah, you need to keep going forward. Right. Well, so I mean, you, in the case of rollback boundary, you have both products still registered. Right. The old right. bundle is registered and the new bundle is still registered. So that's that. You are in a intermediate state and need to keep going forward or remove. Yeah. And in that, then you're in a manual situation where, yeah, that package has to be removed. The, sorry, the new bundle has to be removed completely and then go manually repair the old bundle because there's no way we're going to get that right. So you're saying yeah. if it hits a rollback boundary, it shouldn't even... Well, Yo, that, it, yeah, it hasn't... That having... doesn't work, though. I mean, that kind of defeats the purpose of what we're trying to do here because it could roll back one of the packages. Yeah. But we still want it to go back and call the old bundle to reinstall it. No, because the new bundle is still present. It's more likely to trigger a, a downgrade abort. I mean, as long as the new bundle is still present because it hit a rollback boundary, it should not attempt to go to the old guy and say, hey, fix this. The new bundle is still in control. I mean, it part may be missing, right? But the only way, you, that means you need to go pick up that new install and can try it again. So you're saying the, the new bundle needs to keep on going and uninstall the old bundle even though it failed? The new bundle failed? Oh, the new bundle failed. Does the new bundle's registration get removed if you hit a rollback boundary that isn't the first one? No, I mean, no. if stuff's installed, okay, then it's going to be installed. Right, good. All right, good, good, good. Right, so so in that state, I'm saying that the new bundle hit a rollback boundary, so it's partially installed, or whatever the rollback boundary meant, and you need to, the user's going to have to like, oh, well, I'm going to have to go back and install this again. So, I mean, the real case where rollback boundaries are used are you have like this optional thing in your install that you're okay if it fails 
um, and you mark that rollback boundary as optional, what was called optional, non-vital, I forgot, we've, we've changed the names, whatever, such that you could say, here's my core product, and then I have these add-on things. And it was like, it was a Visual Studio scenario, honestly, where it was like, hey, Visual Studio's on the machine, but you didn't get some, the, I don't know, the Spy++ tool, right? <laughs> and we don't want to roll back the entire Visual Studio install just because you didn't get a couple of these tools that were here at the end. Right, so the visual, new Visual Studio completes, but the Spy++ stuff failed. So you have partial failures in your transaction that you were allowed to ignore because you had a rollback boundary wrapped around however many MSIs made up that Spy++ thing. And then you said, all right, cool. Put those MSIs in that, made that rollback boundary optional. If anything fails in that little pocket of packages, we'll just skip it and we'll keep going rather than rolling back the gigs that was Visual Studio, right? Um, and, and that's a way to use rollback boundaries. In, well, was it was it so much that the, these things were optional that then the idea that rolling back the gigs and gigs was bad, and it's better no, to you're right. to be partially installed to attempt again. You're right. In other words, right. it is. It, it's it's more about transient failures than than optional no, you're right you're right it, it, you're right it is actually not just the optional scenario it is the fact that you got to this point the product overall is intact um there's and we don't want to roll back gigs and gigs because the product's intact but it's not completely there so rather than have the user start over from scratch have the user be able to pick up the install and continue where they left off where they have you know 500 megabytes left, uh, you know, instead of the two gigabytes that they already got through, you know, in addition to the two gigabytes they already got through or whatever. Well, it might be that even what is currently installed doesn't work. It, it, and that's Again, absolutely possible. I, I don't, yeah. I wouldn't recommend that design where you have a rollback boundary no, where things don't work not. at all. Um, but, and in that case, then the old version is still going to be there because the new one didn't if if it's a failure, the new one didn't complete, so it won't run the upgrades. I hope. And in the case that I was talking about, where it's an optional component with a uh, with a set of packages, an optional rollback boundary with a set of packages, then it will remove the previous version because, well, you know, we got this new thing on. You lost this pocket of packages like Spy Plus Plus. If you want them, just repair. You're still better off than having to go through and reinstall the whole thing as a whole. Yeah. All right. But in all those cases you run the new install to complete it. And that new install will continue to deal with the old install the same way. Does that make sense? You, I guess you're assuming that they're not using vital rollback boundaries. Well, well, they, that, that's the that's where the optional mm -hmm. rollback boundaries differ. Yeah. Right. That's the uh, I I'm assuming here. I think Rob, that's the the Spy Plus Plus stuff you're talking about. Yeah. Um, uh, elsewhere, again in Visual Studio, there are non-optional. I hate that um, rollback boundaries that would change what we're talking about. But it's basically it turns it. The, the optionality of the rollback boundary or vitality of the rollback boundary determines whether the install is considered failed or successful at the end. Correct. It's it, partially successful means failure or success depending on those rollback boundaries. So, so like in another example, you have all of Visual Studio, you've installed you know two gigs of it, and then the debugger fails. Okay. <laughs> So Visual Studio can start, text editor, all that stuff works, but the debugger will not work. Okay, so the install said it was failed because they consider the, vi the debugger a vital part of the product, let's say, I don't remember. Um, then the new install, hey, we didn't roll back those two gigs that it took us to get to this point, but you know, your debugger doesn't work. And so we need to uh, go into the install and you can pick up and have behaviors like, oh, hey, you're not complete yet, let's get you finished, and then you can hit the, well, go again button, and it would replan everything and attempt to install the remote debugger and everything after that again. And hopefully somewhere in there, whatever caused the remote debugger to fail has now been resolved, and you get the debugger installed 
and it removes the, any previous versions when it finally succeeds. Yeah, but in that first run, it wouldn't have uninstalled the previous version. In the first run, it wouldn't have. Right, it would not have. Un, no, that's absolutely correct. You're right. When you hit this state, you end up with two bundles installed at the same time. You are correct. I don't know, that's kind of a, kind of weird, but I guess it's not easy to do much better than that. That that's the problem. <laughs> and rollback boundaries are um what's the word? Um weird? No, not just weird. I mean, they are unusual. They're they're um least damage pot like they're they're not good places to be. They're it's it's better than the alternative. What's I, I there's feels like there's a word for that. Um it it's d damage minim minimization. Right? So all right. Rather than lose the entire install because this one little thing failed, let's just create these spaces at the end where if you know we get to this point we're okay. And it's better off to continue to try to push forward than it is to go all the way back to the beginning. And that's essentially what you're saying at a rollback boundary. It is better for me to try to push forward within a future attempt than it is for me to go back to the beginning. And yes, the older version is still there because we haven't removed it yet. And that's weird, but that's because we didn't finish the current one and we can't remove the old one until the current one is gone. Anyway. If you're using explicit rollback boundaries, you are you're taking on a responsibility that this could happen. Correct. I mean, to a certain extent, it's like I don't know that there's a lot. We have to accommodate it because rollback boundaries are there, but you know, it's not a uh, it's not a default case. Yeah. Case, right. Yeah. This is explicitly authored. And you're you're trying to do something, right? And again, the a lot of the intent is that oh, your install failed, which almost always turns into a user having to you know the user's going to have to fix something, right? So the hope is that then they can find the fix, the small fix. They you know they delete a reg key or they delete a file that was accidentally in the way. They restart their computer, whatever the answer is, right? And then they come back and they complete the install. And it's like, oh, whew, that worked. I'm glad it didn't take me to start all over from scratch. That's the the uh, best case scenario for rollback boundaries. So with all that said, then rollback boundaries, I think, would um, practically uh, remove this uh, automatic repair behavior, right? Because you have a rollback boundary, then you're not going to get to a point where the new bundle ever removes itself. Therefore, it's not going to ever be like, hey, and let me go fix the old bundle because it's always still around. But it essentially comes down to if the bundle is removed completely, if the new bundle, sorry, old bundle's on the machine, new bundle installs, the new bundle fails, and it rolls back completely to the point at which it's removing its ARP entry, that's when it can say, oh, and let me go ahead and kick off the automatic repair of the old bundle. I think this all makes sense. Does it actually address the issue? Like. It seems like the issue is trying to be broader than which one? Three four two one or this one? Yeah, three four two one. Um like it sounded like it wanted to do it per MSI instead of relying on a previous bundle to be able to put it back. Oh yeah, I I totally understand that people would rather we just turn around and go back and repair the MSI that we broke, that we've removed. And then we fall into the, yeah, but we can't. 
I mean, so. it, in the simplest cases, which most people may be thinking about, like, yeah, look, you, you have the old MSI still cached here. You should be able to find it, right? And then you can just add it to your rollback script instead of doing an uninstall or as part of the uninstall, also do the install of the old MSI. And that will all just work, right? And you're like, well, maybe if the MSI doesn't need any properties, oh, it needs these properties. Well, why don't you use the properties from the new bundle and just pass them to the old bundle again? Well, that assumes the new bundle passes the same properties to the upgrade MSI that the old one expected, right? And you just all fall down. And as Jacob and Bob have both pointed out, if that MSI is not cached, well, then you can't do any of this, right? So a more generally straightforward solution is to go, hey, the old bundle is here because we are going to launch it for uninstall. So how about we just launch it in repair as the new bundle leaves and the old bundle goes about going, hey, I need this MSI because it's missing from the machine. Let me put it on the machine, which is a normal thing for that bundle to do anyway during a repair-like scenario, a la the conversation we had about repair versus install. It's just like, hey, this is missing. It should be here based off of all my decisions. Put it back on the machine. Yay, look. It took us a little bit longer to get here. It took two bundles instead of the one new bundle being able to um, fix all of the parts of the old one. But yeah. Um, sorry, I got to figure out how to block somebody here. Yeah. All right, there it is. Okay. Go. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure. And, and again, I've, I've thought about it. Like every time I do the math, I end up in a situation where I'm like, uh, nope, can't find the MSI in that case. Uh, nope, can't do the MSI in that case. But we can't find the bundle, so what if we just launch the bundle? And that's where I've ended up on this. It's not that I've sat down and said, all right, I've done all the scenarios. Is there any way to make this work? I just haven't done it. it you know, we could try scrolling away more information during the initial install to allow us to have, you know, to be able to pull this off for all the um, old MSIs. So we're like, oh, if this information is scrolled away, you know, the install logic, then we can do an optimal, hey, we found the MSI in the cache and we found its uh, repair me scrolled away information. So we can have the new bundle use that bundle or that MSI from the cache and do it so we don't have to kick off the repair of the old MSI. And, you know, maybe that's a 90% scenario maybe, but I haven't thought down deeply into how complicated it is, all the implications of that, so on and so forth, right? So, and at a certain point, is running the old bundle wrong? Is it a bad idea? I think the worst case scenario mm. is that it's it might, say, usually it isn't as optimal as what you just described. There's there's slight there's going to be more overhead than burn could theoretically accomplish, but uh, yeah, <laughs> how often is that a significant amount of overhead versus the overhead of you know trying to prove and design and implement the optimal solution you just discussed. Yeah, and I, I don't know. the I only bring up the optimal solution because maybe it is the most common. Oh, right? sure. I, if I planning of the, the new common. bundle can find the information about the old bundle, including everything necessary to to reinstall it should our major upgrade fail, and most MSIs are as simple as that, maybe that is the, I mean, maybe that's, that's not a full solution to 3421, I guess I'd say. Uh, but maybe it's the, uh, it could be the 90% solution. That's entirely possible for most of the MSIs and most of the bundles of the world. Um, it possibly could be, you know, the most, that happens the most, happens, the, anyway, the case that works the best. And then, yeah, I, that you need the fallback for the remaining 10, which is to rerun the old bundle. Right, but maybe we solve 90% of this problem with that solution instead, and in the future we do the other, or you opt in. I don't, I'm, like I said, I haven't thought through 
the the implications of this. I'm pretty sure to solve it completely, it needs the automatic. To solve every case always, I'm pretty confident automatically launching the old bundle, as long as the old bundle is prepared to be launched automatically, will solve all the problems. And that being prepared to be launched automatically is the hard part. To communicate well, to everybody. To communicate. Not yeah, that yeah, it's hard yeah, to write. Right. That it's hard to communicate to everybody that, by the way, this may happen to you. Well, it's mostly... It, you have to not actively prevent it because yeah. in the end it, the the operation uh, assuming we don't you know do a special related bundle mode um although that's probably the best way to communicate the intent um but the the action is a silent install which you should already tolerate it's the it's a scenario of, oh, but I'm running in this context that, you know, maybe someone could not have accounted, did not account for when doing their BA logic. Right. Exactly. Which is why I agree. I think a, a you know, a related bundle mode is probably the, the best way to make it explicit. And again, the, the default is going to do the right thing, but. The default in the engine will do the right thing. True. The default in the engine will do the right thing. I don't know what BA would do, but right. Yes. Yep. That's that's that. I think that walks all the way around it, Sean, and hopefully sets the appropriate level of um, how much design have we done on this? Well, <laughs> that's about it. That's where it ends. <laughs> it goes no farther than that. Um, is this the largest flaw and burn remaining? Because you went through and fixed up the caching goofiness most recently. Or Yeah, I think this is... I think this is the last big one. All right. On that note, um, what are you thinking, Sean? <laughs> Where do you want to... Where do you want to take these two? It should not be so, in three X. It should either go into the V next, or it should go. Or if Sean's like, yeah, I want to tackle it in four. But it's so not for the one I three. just created, yep. Is it is it easy to uninstall a minor update? Mm, no, I mean, you uninstall the MSI. Sorry, and what do you like? Is there any I mean, is it just going to be as simple as, like, when it comes time to roll back, yep. like, there's no, we already know how to uninstall a minor update? A minor update is a recache reinstall of an MSI, so it's it's essentially, it slapped the, new old, the, the newer MSI over top the old one and then did a repair, so removing it is a normal uninstall. You just can't get the, you, because you slapped over top the old MSI, you can't get the old MSI back, it's, like, gone. So it, it is a simple uninstall. The minor upgrade will be gone. The previous package is gone, gone. So it completely uninstalls the package. It, it's, it's, yes. The, it, it replaces it, the old one in the cache, and it says, I am now you. <laughs> and then it does a repair to put its files on the machine. That's essentially how the minor upgrade works. So you can remove the minor upgrade by saying, hey, you in the package cache, or in the m installer cache, it's time for me to remove you. Uninstall the package, just like normal. And I'll be like, ooh, and you come back. And he's gone. Yes, it's a normal uninstall. So is this what people want then? <laughs> like, was it done purposely where rollback wouldn't uninstall a minor upgrade? No, I think it's probably because of detecting the minor upgrade logic got goofed. Okay. Because also there's a lot of confusion around minor upgrades when we were working on them. Um, at one point, we got really confused about the product code and the version number in the code. I found a place where I was like, oh, this was, this comment is very, very wrong. Um, and I it was probably a poor handoff between um, Frederick and I. Because minor upgrades are a little bit weird. Um, and I think the logic got wrong, and we just never noticed, because they're also not very popular. 
At least they weren't. Not many people wrote MSI minor upgrade MSIs because you had to have a bootstrapper to run the command line to make them work. And then bundles, which means we didn't have a lot of them out there, didn't do a lot of verification on them. And then when we now you have burn that can do it and it'll do the command lines for you correctly. More people use them and then you find I think this. Oh yeah, that's the logic we chose to do, huh? Hmm, okay. So I think that's the answer. And mostly people did minor upgrades so they could do patches. Yes. Yes. And of course patches are different. But yeah. MSPs themselves are managed completely differently. Right. <clears throat> so in the I end guess... I think the logic is wrong on it that it got detected wrong. I guess with this one, I'm a little scared that I don't understand the implications of what's going to happen if I make this work. I think it's going to behave the same as major upgrades. Right. OK. That, that I... if, if it doesn't start behaving the same as major upgrades, then that's where we have a disconnect. Uh, let me put it that way. Okay, I expect it to behave the same as major upgrades when we fix the logic here. It could also be, um, like Keith pointed out in 3421, the, um, it's generally considered okay that a newer version of the minor upgrade package is on the machine. That's, you know, that's the, uh, that's the file versioning logic in MSI, right? Don't downgrade a file. That's just, that's rude. New, newer means better. Um, so also just looking at the code, there, there's nothing to account for the minor upgrade action when it comes to calculating the rollback. It's, it's just, was it present? Is that the request? Then do nothing, unless you're doing features. Yeah, and so, I, I think that given the way that major upgrades work, it was just like an oversight. Right, right. Because you can't fix it. Like that's the weirdest. That that decision is very strange. Like you, you can't, can't undo the minor upgrade. Yeah, you can't get rid of it. It's invisible. Except entirely. No, it's invisible. How do you? Get, I mean, you have to, like from the command line, you have to go MSI X slash X. Product code. Minor upgrade is not a patch. No. <laughs> yes, but I'm but I'm saying that because Burn installed it without ARP on normally, right? There's like the user won't even know it's still around. Like this just it's oh, just sure. all round busted. Yeah, so the only way to quote unquote roll back to go back to the prior version is to uninstall it and then reinstall it, in which case you run into the same, you know, potentially missing properties and whatnot of major upgrades. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's the same I, as major upgrades at that point. Yeah, you, it yeah. doesn't work. And more importantly, a, uh, you know, a typical user will not be able to see this MSI on the machine. You have to like query the, the Windows installer or inventory API to go, hey, who owns this MSI? And of course, you know, there's this invisible MSI on my machine that's not owned by a bundle. Good luck finding all that out, right? And it's like, ugh. anyway, it's just busted. So this behavior is better. The problem is it's a big breaking change. And given that people may have got used to it, if we don't solve the, hey, we'll go back and repair you or whatever we're solving there, breaking this may make people more upset than given the fact that they may have gotten used to this behavior, even though it's busted. Yeah. No, I agree. We have to do 3421 before we can do 6535. Yeah. We don't have to, but I think we probably well, should. Sorry. Just to be we clear. Should. Right. Right. We right. Should. It's not technically required, but it's no. Um, I mean, I can do those in four. All right. That would be interesting. That would be yeah. very interesting. Yeah. I agree. And I'd love to see this missing case covered. Yeah, I won't quite call it a flaw, but ah, yeah, yeah, it's a it's a design flaw from the very beginning. Sorry, Ron, I I saw your question about how much of explanation can we provide to encourage the user to attempt the required repair, um, 
and you know at the end of your install or at the in your failure dot failure dialog of your current bundle of your new bundle you could say hey I rolled I cleaned up after myself but in doing so I may have damaged the previous version of this product you know push this button to go launch a repair of that product all of that would be possible for someone to do in their own custom BA on all that sort of stuff all possible but it takes a fair bit of work and the main thing we're discussing here is basically just do all that for them because it's the only way to get back to a place and try and have a user understand hey we may have broken something you may want to repair this you're like uh okay yes i i suppose uh no just fix it for them it's kind of the the idea all right that took a lot more than i thought it would but um maybe so you, I you jinxed be us when you said I this i did was quick. that's all my yeah. fault yep. all yep. my fault um, Wix actually cannot find global. I thought I already opened this, so I took it, put it in four. It's mine. I haven't looked at it yet, but I saw it. I thought I opened a bug for that, but I'm going to trust that Sean looked before he opened a new one. So. No, I didn't look. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, give it to me, and I'll dupe them if I find them. If not, it's just like it's one of those, I meant to open it, but I didn't. Um, I don't understand. Uh, suppressed dial, suppressed downgrade failure should cause Wixstand Bay to not even try plan or apply. Okay. I agree. I'll take this one. Okay. Sounds great. I don't even have to understand it. That makes me happy. Um, and that is the new issues of the week. Um, namely, someone asking a question that didn't get completely untagged, and then Sean creating lots of work, which I think Bob Summer mentioned that Sean fixes ancient, old, awesome to fix bugs and then opens new issues. <laughs> anyway. Well, to be fair, only one of those was found by me. Oh. Right. We said open this one. I don't know. Oh, that was open from an issue out there. This yeah was open from somebody else using preview. By the way, I'm just going to put this here because I didn't say it anywhere else. Uh, 6536, Wixx cannot, cannot find non-global installed execution pack, extension packages is exactly the class of bugs I'd hope we'd find in Preview Zero. So, yeah, there's been like three or four, not nearly as many as I'd hope would be flushed out, because I expect there are more than that, but I'm glad that it's being found. So that was a real bug that was found by somebody else. The minor upgrade was discussed from before, and Sean, I guess you figured out the X-Log thing here, probably. Yeah. Yep. All right. Very good. Um, given that we just spent a lot of time talking about 3142, do we want to talk about 5950? Sean, that's your call. Do you want to um, do this now? I'm, or do we want to skip it and try to do a little bit more of old triage? Your call. We can skip it. All right, because I want to do a little bit of old triage and... We spent a lot of time on 3142. I am not complaining, not complaining at all, but I'd like to get through at least another page of old triage. So, um, and since 3142 has turned out to be a, I'm sure it's bigger than 5950, then yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, it'll be much more uh, valuable to go ahead and get that one rolling. So, hey, we used our time well, even if we didn't put the 3142 on the design discussions as a way to uh, solve world's problems. Um, using the Wix tool set. So, moving on. Let us go triage Wix 4 issues, and we're starting at 5994. 5994. Now, I thought I had this on a boundary, but I guess it didn't quite have a boundary. Uh, accessibility. Pop-up window has the same text. Oh, look! I just answered this in a thing when I was sending out the Oh, you can change it via Wix 4? Low text? Ooh. All right. So uh, accessibility issue. They want to be able to change the texts of these two dialogues separately. Um, and Bob says it can be done. I assume we have to change the strings, the low string identifiers or something? Bob. Yeah, interesting. Um, All right. Are, 
we're not putting these in 4.0, right? These go in 4x until someone wants to do the accessibility sweep. I think that's where we're at on these. Right? Am I rem am I, I think so. Really? Okay. <laughs> Bob's hesitating, so I'm wondering if he's thinking he's going to fix this. Or no, do I don't something? I don't remember. Um, oh, okay. Um mm. Sorry, I'm I'm also I don't remember why I made that comment that Wix4 can change it. Um it could just be that that confirmation dialog did not have its own loc string, which is just I don't know. It seems weird that I would have well, it seems weird I it would have gotten through, you know, years of Wix UI work. Um because, you know, this latest batch of folks looking at accessibility were not the first people to do so. Hmm. Um, well, this but, is an old bug. This is an old bug, so 2019. Yeah, not, no, I <laughs> thinking years, years and years ago. Sure, sure. A couple of years. Got it. Um, Uh, sorry, I, I was distracted. I, I forgot two different things. Um, whether I, I believe you're correct though that these were going into four X. So yeah. we're just I'm, waiting for I'm someone with that. Go do the sweep. It's like, yeah, someone wants to sit down and think about all these things and then actually localize all of them. Just a bigger problem. All right. Bundle doesn't detect earlier bundle with bundle upgrade code in different GUID style. Oh gosh, I can't believe we let this, this through. No, we didn't. This this is a this is a problem of using look strings. Oh, this is a, this is fine in the compiler. Compiler normalizes GUIDs. Um, look <sighs> strings bypass all that. Got you. So we need to validate that this is actually what we think it is at the end. Um, okay. I wonder if that's been fixed. It's entirely possible. I don't know that it has, though. I don't know that I've done anything to try good, try parse good. So. Right. You need to refresh before. Thank you. Because Bob got that going. Uh, five nine nine four, bundle didn't detect it with different good style. Hmm. How did that work? <laughs> that bug that we assigned to me that was really old. Oh, came into right. four. All right, great. Okay, moving to the next page. Let's see if we can get through this page. Unable to extract X64 engine. All right, using 311. Okay. Rob, what do you want to do with 608? It's assigned to me. It's in four. It's fine. I will keep it. Right. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. It it's already assigned to me. I will. I will. As I'm going through, I'll be like, it, it should be a very straightforward thing to add validation for. I will yeah. do it as I'm getting to that level of bugs. It'll be a nice bug to fix because I have all the MS build stuff way before it. That's not nice to fix. All right. Unable to extract engine from 64-bit bootstrap or XE using Insignia 311. Okay, see, this is another case where I'm like, what was I thinking? Um, I don't understand. Bundles are 32-bit. Yeah. Right. Bundles are always 32-bit. So I don't understand what this bug is about. I'm like, is however, it, triage? it is now valid for 4.0 because it does need to be able to support this. That is true. Yeah, do we do we have signing in preview zero? No, we don't. Okay. We don't. Um, yeah, this will have to come back. Uh, this will have to be implemented. Um, yeah, give this to me. I, I will. I will do the Insignia stuff. It'll be a good thing to remind me of. Oh, hey, yeah, Insignia four. Where's that? Um, I will do that. Error something during cache of compressed package with multi disk multi disk bundles. Oh yeah, this was this was yeah bizarre. 
Um, but it's that set error mode thing. Oh. I think. Sorry. That was as of two years ago, that was my thinking. During cache of compressed package. This is a case where Windows is popping up the the message that instead should Okay. Flow to burn, I think. Which obviously means, you know, there's still some more research to do here. And it's about multi disk bundles. Um, are we keeping this in four? Keep it in four to add this? I don't know. Has this not already been added? I don't know. Uh I'm not doing this one. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm fine moving this to four X. Sean? Okay. All right. Okay, four X. Yeah, I can move. Okay. I didn't know he was like, okay, I'll take it. Uh, okay. Um, That's not what okay means. <laughs> <laughs> That's rarely what okay means. <laughs> Just checking. All right. Uh, SDK package for Wix Custom Action Development. Yes, that's assigned to me. It's all good. Package not cached after bundle upgrade. Isn't this what we we're just talking about? Mm. Oh, no, the cache being deleted prematurely. Oh, dependency register when bundles are cached to a package. This feels very familiar, like we've talked about this. Sean? I don't remember talking about it. Okay. I'm... Yeah, I guess it comes down to should we register dependencies as soon as a package is um, cached? Yeah. Not a breaking change, It'd be a, a small improvement kind of thing. Any opinions? 4X? Nobody's jumping on this. If no one jumps, it's 4x, right? All right. Or or v next. Yeah, I don't. I think it could be 4x, but I'm. I'll let Sean pick. I haven't really thought through what this actually would mean. I'm not. I'm not sure if it's that easy. I mean, I guess it could be 4x, maybe. So be next then. <laughs> Nobody's jumping on this. Sure. All right, Sean. Stronger opinion. Pick one. <laughs> I mean, I guess we can do V next, and if someone really wants to bring it back, maybe we can talk about it then. There you go. I like that attitude. Restart doesn't work on elevated burn stars launched on Windows Server 2019. Oh, yes. Server and is making it harder to restart. You have to be an admin as well as having the restart permission, which means you can't launch it from a non-elevated bundle. Didn't we talk about a different one last time? It feels like we've talked about yeah. this before. This is two weeks ago. Oh, this is the one we talked about two weeks ago. Oh, yeah. Why oh, we wait, are we ahead? that close to the present? No, I brought this back. Oh, okay. Why didn't we add it to preview one at that point then? Um, I say blame the scribe. Not it. Oh, wait, that's me. <laughs> I mean, if we agreed to put in V4 two weeks ago, then it should have been preview one. Yeah, I just forgot. I added it now. Okay. And I will still take a look at this. 
Ooh. Again, th- th- this is the and, – and whenever I'm volunteering here, this is you know, an implicit – I will look at it for 4.0, but I'm not guaranteeing that I'll fix it in 4.0. Right. Right, right, right. Okay. 6.207, which should include, dot, uh, should include .NET new templates? Um, sure. Um, you can give this to me. I, I'll take a look at it. Again, I'm not sure it's going to go in. It's an interesting idea. I want to look at it. Um, we'll see how how much it makes sense as well. Does .NET new make sense for to create Wix templates? I don't. I uh, I want to sit down and think about it a little bit. Um, at the end. I opened it when you were all gung ho about the I know .NET tool exactly, and I still am gung ho about the .NET tool. I just haven't. Doesn't that mean that everything has to be .NET commands anyway? I want I want to look at it, but it's going to be like one of the last things I do in four. Yeah. Um, and it could absolutely be in four X as well. That's true. Um, smart cabbing is not working in some cases. Okay. Ah, that's going to take a lot of diagnostics to figure out. Um, anybody want to jump on that one? I'm not going to jump on this anytime soon. Nope. Nope. All right. Be next, because I like Sean's idea, because this is not, we're not going to pick that up in 4X. So, hey, a UI accessibility bug assigned to Bob. Oh, this is a meta issue. Great. Um, 4X, right? Because we're just not doing these in 4 right now, unless someone steps um, up with accessibility desires. Uh, actually, I actually have to think about that. Um, it might not be a 4X thing ah. because it could have low impact, for example. Some of them could. I don't. Oh, so you're saying it's a P-next thing at this point. It might be. Yeah. Um... So, um, let's go for X for now. Okay. Some of them could probably be fixed in for X. Yep. All if right. Wix way. Proj does not support package reference. That is the top level thing that I am trying to solve. Very happy that issue is here. Um, NetFX, NetCore packages don't detect newer versions. Mm-hmm. Haven't heard back from the folks who were working on that in a while. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened to them. Doesn't bode well. They might be waiting on us to get closer to release. It's fair. So we'll keep it 4.0, and we will continue to talk about it. Define constants from project reference are duplicated. That's mine. Unhelpful behavior when including multiple BAs. Someone wants a better error message. All right, so we have a test. Bob said he would take it. Okay. That was dumb. (laughs) <laughs> the bundle is missing T data and cannot continue. That is fascinating. I wonder how we got that message. Um, it's somehow not detecting that there was duplicate BA symbols. Yeah. Uh, for certain eyes of T. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, that then. So, Bob, still? Uh, sure. Oh, I've lost track. Unhelpful. All right, 6309, non-vital rollback boundary. Doesn't stop on failing package. Um, a non-vital should cause the execution to start again at the next rollback, which means that any errors... 
outside of non-vital bound is ignored. Uh, we were just talking about stuff in this area. Yeah, I was hoping that Nier would be contributing these back, but he doesn't seem to be very interested in doing that. Oh, he's just making his own fork and doing that? Yeah. So I guess I'm going to have to take it. Okay. Decide what to do there. Extracting bundles is not exposed in v4. That's true. You can give that to me. I have a whole decompiler space to go spend some time with. Dark error extract has been returned. That's very strange. Oh, yeah, whatever. That's just the call back from extract cap feeling. All right, yeah, give that to me. Those two go to, oh, it's already signed to me. That's great. Um, new minimum OS for Wix v4. We'll keep that. Remove cache ID attribute from package elements. Yeah, I know we talked about this and then I saw someone using it, <laughs> like not too distant future or not too distant future, not so distant past. Man, that was weird. Um, I oh, really- Were they using it for good reason? Yeah, they were they were using it exactly correct. So, so it's it's complicated. They were using it exactly correctly. They had figured out how to use it completely correctly. Um, but they'd built a really complex system that they never should have built. Um, and it was one piece that allowed them to do so. And I was very conflicted. I was like, yeah, don't ever do all of these things that you did. But having cache ID allowed you to be able to build that. And it hurt my head a lot. It's one of these, I don't want to expose it. I mean, the easier thing is to just let it be. Yeah, I know. We probably should just let it be. Probably should just let it be. I think the answer in the end is. Uh, is this actually fixed then? Yeah. Okay. okay. So that is fixed in this. Yeah. All oh, right, because that's when we auto generate. Probably should just let it be. So I think we should just close that one. We can just kill 6329. Oh, burn engine head requests. I'm not going to get to this. Um, I can do it. Okay. It's it was a it was important back when. Um, it was important when we had the two gig problems and when INET and stuff like that. And I guess that's still going to be a thing, but it does double the requests. It would be nice to not do a head request every time, um, except when we have to. Anyway, document all... Actually, um, back to the new minimum OS for V4. It's like yes. a documentation thing. Yes. But where is the documentation? <clears throat> like like Heath asked uh, in something recently. Like, it... I don't know where that V4 documentation is. Well, that's the doc repo. But it just has the XSDs, right? It has a handful of, let's call them bones, that would make a skeleton if there were more bones involved. Yeah, so the problem is I have a lot of changes on my laptop that I was working on while Heidi was in gymnastics, and I need to spend the time on that laptop to get them good and push those all those changes but they're those mostly are all XSD things. changes. Yeah, those are mostly XSD changes. Does okay. it not have all the rest of them? Oh, I guess it doesn't have the rest of the chum-based stuff there. Correct. Does it? Correct. Does it? No, it's... It, it does not. It does uh, not. I was... Uh, someone someone offline was asking about this. Um, it, it just has the the bare minimum of of, of empty topics that I... I 
wrote, can you actually write an empty topic? I created the headers for empty topics um, so that we could host the schema doc that, that gets generated. And the, my, my top, of the head, top of the head ideas for uh, how we would document getting started with Wix 4, especially not that we did this, but especially around preview zero uh, for using the .NET tool. But all the rest of the chum content, the how-tos, and all the manually authored stuff, I did not move, uh, mostly because it, you know, of course, contains a bunch of three Wix three specific content, and it's written in not Markdown, and you know, it needs to be made Wix four compatible and fit into the the new system. And I just did not do that as part of preview zero. Yeah, so we need to finish all these things. I know this is all those parts. I'd forgotten about all. Yeah, so yes, we need to do all those things. And this is one small piece of all that. I thought I had more of it then, but there's a lot still to bring over. Yeah, okay. definitely, definitely. Okay. Again, that's the mix of uh, you know, everything has to be uh, individually catered. It, it, we don't want to bulk import. Uh, sorry, I decided I did not want to bulk import that stuff because I didn't want you know Wix three authoring to hang around and. Some of it's pretty bad. Like, you know, uh, I don't, I don't know when this happened, but at some point we started color coding the the Wix authoring, and I don't know. I'm assuming that was done with a tool at some point, but it means you know all of that, um, all that code is marked up with oh, with span, HTML color. and yeah, yeah, and, mm -hmm. and raw styles embedded. Styles. I'm like, ugh, no, that's that's too much work. Okay. So that's why it, it hadn't moved. Yeah. Yet. We still have lots of work to do on the doc side. Yeah. Uh, document all public types and members. Uh, Well, to do counts as a comment or as documentation, right? Yeah, I mean, we're getting better on the extensibility since Sean turned on the required thing, and then there's just every time I hit a new interface or whatever, I remove the disable and I just put all the doc in there. Um, I don't know that we're ever going to go through all of the, the symbol types. That's just too much uninteresting typing. And I'm yeah, sure I agree with that. Terribly interesting as it is. Um, the interfaces, the extensibility interface, the extensibility assembly is the most important one to document um, as far as the core tool set goes. Well, we'll keep it here and we'll go from. It can make me feel sad again in the future. Um, when getting all files in use message on a .NET Chainer, the response is wrongly returned to .NET Chainer. Uh, this is another one of those near ones, isn't it, Sean? Yeah. I mean, I guess I'll have to take it. Yeah. BA requests get dropped when UI is shown on engine thread. Oh. Blair signed up for that one. Great. Great. Let's see where it goes. Um, burn does not repair MSI. Oh, hey, that's our triage thing. It's still floating out here. Um, burn update detection supply hashes if present in update feed. Okay. Bob's still interested in that one. We're getting close to the reality or the end of the world here or current times, I guess. Burn update detection supply hashes if present in update feed. Is that going in for Bob? 
Sorry, I'm looking for a coin to flip. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. I, I haven't I haven't looked at <sighs> I'll take it. For now. It's, assigned to you. That's what it's assigned to you, so it's just questions know, by the station for. All right. No, it's um, a question of whether I do the work in for. Right. All right. Which is a separate question. Yeah. So, do compiler extensions? Yep, that's assigned to me. Implement cabinet spanning. Uh, yes, I know that that's not completely done. I think I opened it. Yep. What, so, 6367, decompiler extensions, what are we doing? Uh, yeah, it's assigned to me. I want to keep it. I, I have to go through the, de okay. de the decompiler is not complete, so I'm going to keep these until we get to the end of that, until I get into the decompiler fully. All right, I'm going to hit F5 to see if we can end on this page. Oh, uh, where did, okay, here we go. Uh, source files from MSIs. Who wrote this? Web. Source files from MSIs during patching. Oh, source files from MSIs during patching. Do I need a comma in there somewhere? But I just that the problem is that we read source files as one word, not well, the verb. And the, yeah, anyway. Anyway, using using source as a verb, yeah, should be punishable. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, this is assigned to me, and it is correct, and it's some of it's working. Um, improved patch filtering, that's assigned to me, yep. Related bundle detect should support setting a variable. Oh, I see. Yeah, I'm going to move this out. Okay. It's additive. It could go in Forex. It could also go in Vnext. Yep. Uncompressed bundle payloads not copied to output folder for MS build projects. Okay. Give this to me. It'll be part of my... When I get to burn parts, the outside parts of the MS build, as opposed to the internal parts. Building bundles with files that are bigger than supported should be a warning or an error. Hmm, okay. As opposed to crashing? Yeah, as opposed to crashing. As opposed to runtime failing. Oh, even worse. Wait, runtime doesn't fail at yeah. build time. Yeah, it doesn't fail at build time. The MSI just can't handle it. MSI, it when used, an installer can't handle it. It used to until we fixed the data type. Oh, <laughs> right. Uh, okay, and then we broke MSI because of that. We broke, yeah, Windows installer because of that. Okay, uh, give that to me. That's straightforward binder thing. Building bundles with files bigger than support. Right. All right, so that's 6408. I'm going to hit refresh. 6410, we got another one. BA should not receive unknown package IDs during plan or apply. Yeah, I guess I'll take that one. I don't think anyone else is going to do it. No. What are you going to do and always give context about all packages that could be planned? So the problem is the update bundle. Yep. So when you add an update bundle, you should throw a callback to the BA so you it lets it know what the random GUID was. Yeah, I guess, but the random GUID's not random, right? It's the bundle ID, isn't it? No, it's a random. Oh, okay, sorry. Yes, I agree 100% that random GUID is not useful. I thought it was the bundle ID. Oh, uh, yay. All right. Doesn't have an owner yet, but it will. Um, this one gets Sean. All right. I have to go through and make sure everybody has an owner here at some point. Um, well, you're, you're talking very fast, so. I know. That's fine. I know. It's fine. Like .NET Core, whatever. Like, we just have to, I don't know, do all these. It's okay. We're, we're good now. All right. So that's page three of four, which means we have one page left because everything's being added to the end. So that's a positive. Let's look at page four. How many are on here? It's a pretty full page. All right, so that's where we left. We will leave off, 6424. Or that's where we'll leave off. That's where we will leave off and where we will pick up next time, 6424. I'm gonna go drop that in my notepad real quick so I don't lose it. Um, and... What do we have here? One, two. 
Does this show me how many are on a page? No. It looks 25, I think. Yeah, but it doesn't. Not if there's less than 25. Oh, oh, yeah. So I was just like going, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but we're going to hopefully get back into ones that we've already talked about so far. So one, two, three, four, five. I mean, it says 100 open, so. Oh, you're right, 100 open. So that should be an even four pages. Ta-da. So there's 25 on here. OK. Right. Are there that this is great. Like we're down to twenty five. This is this is actually quite quite good. Quite quite good. So uh other things people want to talk about, other stuff getting done. <sighs> things to do. We're at just before eleven, so that's an hour and a half. I guess that's not bad. I mean the design we'd spent on I've lost the number now, thirty four twelve. 3142, whatever that number was, has the number starts at three. I think it ends in two and has a four and a one or a one and a four in the middle. Um, there we go. Pretty good. I'm just kind of filling time, seeing if people have questions, comments, other things they want to talk about. All right, so that's pretty good. 25, hopefully we can get through those 25 in the next meeting, which would be in two weeks, which would be August 19th. That sounds normal. <sighs> August 19th, two weeks from now, we will do all of this again. And depending on what issues get opened, I think we'll actually go over a design discussion uh, this next time. Anything else? Anything else? All right. I think that's it. So August 19th in the morning, my morning that is, we will do it all again. Same things. Same time, different day. Until then, you guys take it easy. Bye. Bye. Bye.